yourself dramatically so you have people's attention. That business of telling stories, how important is that? How important is it to tell stories? Um, What's your name again? Hessa. Hessa. How important are stories? Very important. Very important. Yeah. Very, very, very important. Yes? Yeah. Yes? You all agree with this? Yeah. Oh, my job is done. <laughs> um, do you, well, I wonder though, do you understand how important? Because like, you're all sitting here today, why? Or I suppose the question is how? How do you know to be here today at, at 12? 12. I suppose you guys, you guys at 12.10. You have a schedule, and the schedule tells you you need to be here. And why here today, in this college, at this moment in time? Why? You signed up for it. Why? No. The weight of public opinion. What? To learn. So that. So you can develop yourself. So that. So you can be successful and make loads of cash. Yes? Is that it? No, no, of course not. You're being so caustic. Um, some of you want to be doctors? So come in doing this course. There's a way of induction in relation to Cornell, which means then when you pass your exams and you get into Cornell, then you can study to become a doctor, and then you are a doctor. Anything else going to happen in the future? Tell your kids about your life. You skipped out a bit. Became a doctor, spoke to your kids. <laughs> Presumably you're going to get married. <laughs> it's not an absolute obligation. But it's kind of important, though. Especially here. Yeah? So get married. Yeah, perhaps. Have children? Yeah. Yes, so they can look after you when you're old. Right? <laughs> yes. All that, it's really a story, isn't it? Yeah. What's your name? Razan. Razan. When were you born? 19... <laughs> 1998? It's like yesterday. 1998. Wow. Um, what day? April 14th. April 14th. What time? You don't know? Anyone know what time they, they, they were born? Who would look? What time? 7.30 p.m. PM. 10.30 morning. 10.30 morning. 1.15 in the afternoon. 1.50. 11.50. You're all rounded out numbers. You're all on the zero or the five. Anyone on the minute, like 11 minutes past or 12 minutes past? You, sir? 4 a.m. Again, I'll round it out. <laughs> Do you remember? No. No, what? Yes, do you remember being born? No, nobody. <laughs> no, we all laugh like, how would I remember that? Well, then how do you know? Your parents told you. So your parents told you you have no memory. Your parents told you that this is what happened. They could have just found you under a bush. Huh? Uh, there's, you have, there's a video of you being born. Like two years ago, whatever it was. What? There's pictures. Do you need the proof? Yes, sir. Huh? Birth certificate. Yeah. Piece of paper. Um, what's your name? You. Birth certificate guy. Ahmed. Mohammed. When will you die? Yes. When you're ready. And not before. Good answer. I like it. But you don't have that degree of control over it, really, do you? I mean, I could come up there now and sort it out. But I won't. We're pals, don't worry. Um, anyone know when they'll die? When we die. Huh? No. When we die, we die. But like the date, can you give me a date and time? Say what? Good Lord in heaven. Huh? Okay. But you don't have, we don't have a time. Okay. So, if none of you know when it's all finished, well, not when it's finished, the time being, in this mortal life, okay? Um... You don't know when you're in the middle, right? 
and yet we tell the story of our lives like a story with the beginning and end that we don't really think about a lot somewhere there right? so in actual fact narrative the whole business of story is it's actually a fundamental organizing principle of our lives without it our lives would not make any sense in the way which we make sense of our lives as a story so it's almost like a grounding principle. You think, ah, yeah, stories. And a lot of people think, well, I'm sorry, so I don't do stories much. I don't read that much. You watch movies. But apart from that, apart from other people's stories, once you start thinking about your own story and the way it helps you organize your life, then you come to realize that the genres of literature are of enormous importance in terms of making sense of things. Poetry. We'll get to poetry in a second. Let's do a little bit of drama first. So you had those dramatic exercises at the beginning. Drama means, comes from Greek, it means to do, a doing, yeah? Do you know its origins? Anyone, the origins of drama? Bless you. Huh? Very good. 600 BCE. Before the common era. Yeah, what happened in Athens and Greece? Shall we go on to the next slide? I don't know the next, let's see what it says. <laughs> hmm. Tragedy and comedy. So this is what happens. The Greeks in Athens realized that they had the Spring Festival every year, which is a festival designed to celebrate the gods so that there will be a good harvest, that everyone will have enough food to live through the winter at that point where harvest takes place. So they have a Spring Festival, which basically everybody gets together in town and celebrates. But here's the thing. They noticed that the Greeks had pagan gods for almost everything. There was a god for pretty much everything. And there was a god for chaos, which is quite a good idea, the, the, having a god for chaos, so for disorganization, for uncontrollable things. There was a god. His name was? Good, I like it. His name was Dionysus. Right? Dionysus, the god of chaos. And because he was, he was a god of chaos, he was also the god of alcohol. So people in Greece, this is a long time ago, they didn't know any better, 600 years BCE, they say, oh, we can celebrate the gods by getting drunk. So city father said, wait a minute, there's too much drinking going on here, too many people getting drunk, we need to change the nature of the festival. They said, everybody is celebrating Dionysus, which is the god of chaos, not enough people are celebrating Apollo, who's the god of order. So what we need to do is, we need to come up with a way, an idea that we can blend together the god of order and the god of chaos so people can celebrate. And someone said, Sophocles said, I'm simplifying, this is more or less true, he said, I have an idea, drama. I'll write a story, a story about people's lives. Everybody can come and watch it. In this story, there will be chaos, but there will also be organization. The story will somehow be a reflection of how we live our lives. Does anyone know what that story was? No, I think. Sophocles, one of the first three plays that were staged in the Dionysian Theatre, which is at the foot of the Acropolis in Athens about 600 years ago, Oedipus Rex. Oedipus Rex, also known as Oedipus the King. Anybody? That was... Um, Road to Perdition. No, Clash of the Titans. It's about a guy called Oedipus. He's a king. He's the king of Thebes. Yes? And then uh, a seer comes, and Tiresias the seer comes and says, there's a plague, there's a plague. So the reason there's a plague is there is somebody who needs to be outcast. There needs to be somebody who is outrooted. So Oedipus goes looking in Thebes for the person who is the cause of the plague. And you, the audience, come to realize much sooner than he does. But guess who is the person? Yeah. He's, the He's the one. That's it. Where have you seen this since? Where, I mean, in how many films and countless films have you seen someone sets out looking for someone and then finds at the end of the film that, the that, they, that they are the person they were looking for? A lot of movies. A lot of movies. Name one and you can go. <laughs> I'm not sure I don't Did you see Shutter Island? Uh, yeah. See Shutter Island? Yeah. Leonardo turns up. I uh, think he's a police detective. By the end of the movie, you learn he's actually an inmate in the asylum.
Hide, hide and seek. Yeah. That's it. And he finds it. So at the end, there's a twist. Have you seen Sixth Sense? Yeah. Isn't it brilliant? That would be in your top five movies. I'd be in my top ten movies, I think. Because it does this brilliant thing at one and the same time. It's nice and kind of cutesy, but also scares the pants off you. <laughs> but it's also intelligent. So that twist. Oedipus learns at the end of his day that he has, get this, think about the worst day you've ever had. Do you all got it in your head? Yes? Some people still thinking? If you're still thinking, good, keep it that way. Oedipus learns that Oedipus is a bad day. He didn't know, but he murdered his father and he married his mother. Yes, he didn't know this is what happened. So I just ruined the story. If you're ever reading the play, you'll find out. Yeah. So he murdered his father. He didn't know it was his father. He got into a fight with him at a crossroads. His father was been a bit, a bit mean. So then Oedipus was like, because he didn't know it was his father. He thought someone else was his father. He thought another man was his father. But he was adopted. Right? So he kills his father, and then when he gets to, his father was going to Thebes. So when he gets to Thebes, he meets this woman, and he goes, oh, oh, yeah. and they get married. And then he finds out that you married your mother, and someone says, look, it's a bad day. You murdered your father, you married your mother. So what does he do? He blinds himself. He plucks out his own eyes. At which point, it's a bit pointless at that point, because he's blinding himself at the moment where he can actually see things. Yeah. Where he can see that things aren't as, could be better. You know? So your, ba your bad day? Was it as bad? No. no. Good. Try and keep it that way. Um, why? Why <laughs> would Sophocles sit down and write such a play? Euripides wrote Medea around the same time. Medea marries a guy. She's, virtually she's a barbarian, so she's not Greek. So everyone who wasn't Greek back in those days were barbarians, apparently. So Medea, who's a barbarian, marries a Greek guy and goes back to live in Athens, and then he's really, really mean to her, so she murders the children. 